who would have known that our world would be like this 10 years ago are we together yes I can share with you stories upon stories of the many times in my life where I had to stay until his word came and I acted on supposedly foolish instructions that redefined the next possibilities. This, that's, you see our lives, let me tell you sincerely, and it looks like we are so supernatural it is not that it is because we have learned to lean on a mighty god and we have come to trust the value of his voice that weak and ordinary men when they hear god and receive from him they can run and move valiantly it says by you i will run through a troop and by my god i will leap over a wall it cannot happen by the strength of the flesh for someone you may be a businessman and God is saying mark time except you want to keep losing more money you need to take three days off and lie down and cry to God and say I am a businessman but you are the God of the universe help me the day rain was going to come I'm sure Noah said everybody whether you are a businessman or you are an architect I am not an architect but I have been told that rain is coming come and enter the boat the ark I'm sure many people said you are, look, we are intelligent people. This ark, who, who, how are we sure you constructed it well? But the Bible says when rain came, the heavens gave their rain, the earth gave their rain, whoever was in the middle. And the same rain was lifting the ark while destroying others until it kept it upon Mount Ararat. That is unfair because everything should perish. Yet the ark, as though rain did not touch. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about God. I don't claim to know everything about God, but I can go on my knees to beg you sincerely. Don't just believe God, respect God. God is not a man. God only became a man. God is not a politician. He's not the president of a nation that was elected. No, he's not an ambassador representing some parliament. God is the creator of the ends of the earth your life is not the first to be created he is a master at making men did the bible not say i will lift up my eyes son to the hills he says from whence cometh my help and he said my help cometh from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth if he made the heavens and the earth he can make every other thing including your life is someone learning and so in this case the prophet stays until he receives an instruction, the word of the Lord. Prophesy to these bones. And now he began to speak. And the Bible says, as he prophesied, as he gave, for someone as he sang and danced, God can say, close, lock your door. I know you are in a situation right now. They have given you one week to pay that bill one week and they say your health is deteriorating and the lord will give you an instruction it may come from your study in scripture sing unto the lord a new song or i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise so shall i be saved from my enemies and he will say dance for the next two hours and you lock yourself in a room remember you are a ceo you should be checking statistics and be using intelligence but he said trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 he said lean not on your own understanding it acknowledges the fact that you have understanding but he says lean not on it he says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says be not wise in your own understanding it says fear the Lord and turn away from evil so you lock yourself even as a man of God father I confess that I do not know the way out I don't know what ministry should be for the next five years but I lean to you you are fasting and praying the Bible says on in the fifth month on the twelfth day the word of the Lord came 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 happy is the man who the word comes for you can be weak but let that word come a giant is about to arise you can be in debt but let that word come I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables it said while we look not at the things that are seen 
You are not the first to be in debt. You are not the first to be barren. You are not the first to have a medical report. Ladies and gentlemen, wishing and discussing your problem will only deteriorate it with time. You need to understand the spiritual technology that simulates the condition for a miracle. Otherwise, your life will never reveal the might of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are the, the wife, the widow in Zarephath, for you the instruction would come. Go and feed the prophet. Don't worry. Obey. If you are the ones who are having the feast like it was in the wedding in Cana of Galilee, the instruction would be fix, um, fill six pots with water and take the risk. Put your life on the risk to go and serve the ruler. If those rulers had tasted water, they would have hung those guys. I hope you know that. Esther, if you are the one who is changing the negative verdict of her man, you may need to break some rules and enter to see Ahasuerus, even though not invited. Just be sure that he's the one who spoke. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh. Listen, provided you could look to him. Imagine if the prophet took initiative in that valley and said, You know what? I'm a prophet. Bones respect the presence of a prophet he would shout for nothing it was not the speaking it was the obedience it was not the word of the prophet that brought them back to life it was the word of God spoken through the lips of the prophet many times when you walk with God you see the way of the spiritual man is very very strange because many things in your life will not make logical sense yet the miracles that your life will continue to command will first surprise you and then all the people that follow you it is true this is how some of us got here ladies and gentlemen by the foolishness of direction from God we live in a world that has unnecessarily um, magnified intellectualism and I'm not against that but once it rises above the word of God and logic, common sense I think I know my health I'm just feeling a little pain and I'm sure there's one drug I just got to find out wonderful but what if it's a spirit what if that manifestation is a spirit have you invented machines that diagnose the presence of spirits The woman with the issue of blood were going to find somewhere to pray. The Bible says she spent all her earnings on doctors. She was not a careless woman. She did the best she knew to do. She was a responsible woman who took responsibility over her health and yet it did not change. And she resorted to unashamedly sit down as an unclean person. But the Bible says when she heard back to the hearing again when she heard that Jesus was passing she said to herself if I may but touch I know that I do not know the answer to my the issue of the, the blood that has plagued me but I know it can change and when Jesus was passing many people touching him some touching to find out where his pocket is to steal money others touching different kinds of things it was not the touch it was that it was a touch of faith. A woman said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible says, as soon as she touched him, Jesus said, virtue has left me. Someone touched me with the touch of faith. And the woman looked and said, the fountain of blood had dried up. What a miracle. How about Lazarus? They cried and they said, our brother Lazarus sleepeth. He's dead. Come, let's go and wake him. And when he got there, he said, roll away the stone. You see, there are three death cases in the Bible. 
three resurrection cases that were performed by Jesus and all of them differed in timing. The first was the Bible talked about a captain, a centurion in one of the synoptic accounts who came pleading with Jesus to come and pray for his daughter. Is that true? And the Bible says that while Jesus was on his way going, the woman with the issue of blood, both of them were 12 years old. The woman was 12 years in her pain. That young girl was 12 years. Meaning the day that girl was born, that was the day this woman's trouble started. And the woman said, I will not let you pass me. And she distracted Jesus in performing a miracle for her. By the time Jesus was done, they said, trouble not the master. The lady just died. Somebody said, just died. It just happened. Jesus, if you had come a little earlier, and Jesus said, no problem. When he got there, he drove everything that looked like unbelief out of that room. And he looked at the little girl and said, Tali Takumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. And the Bible says she rose up. Watch this now. Number two, the Bible talks about a widow who by some wicked ancestral manipulation was losing all the men in her life. The first thing is that she became a widow. The man in her life that represented the system of security and support, he just died. And while she was trying to grieve over that one, her only son died and they were carrying him. This one they had concluded just at the gate. In ancient times, once you cross that gate, you could not cross back with a dead body. And once they were crossing the gate of Nain, Jesus said, what is going on here? He said, drop that coffin down. And he picked up that boy like picking an orange from the ground. And he came back to life. The third situation was Lazarus in Bethany. Lazarus had been sick before then. He even acknowledged that our brother is sick. And he said that sickness was not unto death. And yet he died. The same way he said this year is a prosperous year. And now by March you are already in a financial situation. I told you a lie is what you say that you cannot make true. So when you say I will give you or when you say I have a car. It is a lie when you don't have the resources to make it true. Is that true? So when God says you are blessed, regardless your situation, he has the power to sponsor that reality. It is on that basis that God cannot lie. Now the Bible says Lazarus was dead. And when they got to the grave, three days now, he said, roll away the stone. When they rolled the stone, he said, Lazarus. He was not speaking to those people there. Lazarus was inside. Remember the hearing thing again. Everything can hear. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And they thought he was playing. And they saw a man bound hand and feet in grave clothes. How he was breathing when he was alive. Because the way they embalm people, even if you are alive and you are playing, you will die. Are we together? Yes, sir. And a man came out. So how was he breathing? He said, lose him and let him go. And they loosed him and he went. The God of all possibilities. Showing himself every once and again. And the ultimate of that manifestation was when Jesus himself died. After three days, it looked like everything was over. It looked like Satan had defeated him. And Paul gives us the gist of what happened in hell. That all the powers and principalities were compelling him to bow. Acknowledging the lordship of Satan. And that when the legal claims of justice was now satisfied. That he made a public show of them. Triumphing over them in it. Is that true? And he preached to the saints there. And the Bible says they believed and he opened the prison gates according to Peter's epistle. And they all came out. On the third day, an angel came and rolled the stone and sat on it. One of the synoptic accounts says, and the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, Jesus Christ got up and arranged his grave clothes. He was not in a hurry. That is dominion. He arranged his clothes nicely and neatly from the grave. That means order can start even from the grave. Are we together? And Jesus resurrected and he came out and said, all hail, all authority in heaven has been given unto me. 
ladies and gentlemen please hear me there is no situation you are going through right now no matter how long it has stayed except you define it and you agree with the devil that that situation cannot change but provided you agree with God and agree with Apostle Paul that this thing I'm looking at, it can change. I may not know how, but I know it can change. So your next assignment now becomes to stay with God through the ministry of prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit in partnership with the ministry of the word. According to Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, these are the twofold secrets that build stature and sensitivity in the believer. But we will give ourselves continually, he says, to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Acts chapter 2 and verse, four, uh, and verse 42, he says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer next time you are trapped in a situation that should be the time to retreat they that wait upon the Lord spend some time in fasting and prayer Lord this situation my father is sick my mother is sick my daughter is sick I just lost my job the Bible says while we look not at the things that are seen I know there is a way out I accept responsibility whatever it is that I'm not doing right open my eyes that I may see and you are praying in the spirit and the spirit of grace will rest upon you and say this is it there is a destiny any helper that you dishonored five years ago that was a person who was programmed by God to lift you and to raise you like Hagar go back and make peace with that destiny helper and the person will lift you up I have placed favor upon your life you may go back and say uncle I'm sorry for insulting you five years ago and the man will say I had a dream before you came and God said when you arrive I should open a door for you there is always a way out hear me we're wrapping up many times when we go through the valley of the shadow of death we throw God out we throw his word out we throw prayer out we invite depression and lamentation and even Satan we count them around and we sit down and begin to meditate on these things and wonder why we do not rise maybe there's a man of God following right now and you're saying apostle from the time of the pandemic I've not had it easy with ministry can I tell you sincerely you're not the first to be in that situation and I acknowledge your sincere admission like the prophet said only thou knowest but remaining in lamentation and trying to attract sympathy will not convert your pain to glory you will need to understand an instruction from God this is how the elders obtain a good report and by the way, you are not qualified to be called an elder until you can show us your good report. There is a relationship between eldership and the exploits of faith. The Bible says a good report. Listen to me. I don't know who came to church tonight asking apostle, I've come to meet the God of all possibilities. My life is stagnated. Some of you have gone sincerely without speaking negatively from grace to grass. And as it is right now, you're wondering, Lord, can there be a way? I may graduate for years, there's no job. I return back home and my wife feeds me. My wife pays my rent. I'm a man of God, but I'm almost tempted to begin to manipulate people right now and to compromise. I have gotten to the corridors of compromise because of financial stress or because I am not rising and excelling. Listen, let me bring you a word of hope. The Lord put it upon the lips of his servant to organize this convention and call it the God of all possibilities. Not some possibilities. And the Bible says, with men it is impossible. Men can do some things, like give you money, but they may not do some things, like take away the sickness. But there is a God that is able to bring all possibilities. When there was darkness and chaos in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible says the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters, and the word of the Lord came again, light, peace. 
We're about to pray. I came tonight to stir your heart. To let you know that the situation that now mocks God in your life, your family, is at the mercy of your understanding the spiritual technology that converts water to wine, that turns leprosy to glory. You must understand. Number one, it is not sinful to acknowledge the current state of things. You can sit with your wife and say, listen, there are bills. Listen, the ministry is not rising. Right now, they've diagnosed me. They've said I am SS. They've said I am um, whatever it is. I have some kind of blood condition, maybe HIV, maybe traces of cancer. The mammogram is already saying something evil. Admitting the current state is not lack of faith. But endorsing the current state and not speaking the word of the Lord upon it is the difference between lamentation and declarations of faith. O oh, ye dry bones, when you describe it so excellently, don't stop there. You must connect it to the word of the Lord. And then, by the ministry of prayer, the ministry of the spirit in prayer, and the ministry of the word, insist until you get a rhema word from God that represents the instruction that bails you out. Can I tell you, no matter how long you remain in the secret place until that word comes, stay there. It will be cheaper than the losses you will incur as a result of assuming the voice of God. Every time we take steps outside of the voice and the direction of God, I assure you we only program pain and tragedy. Apostle, I'm in Lagos and I'm a pastor. I don't even know where to go. I don't know where to get a church building. I don't know how to pay the rent and I don't want to compromise and start walking in sin and start doing a lot of demonic, destructive things because others are doing it. What is the way out? Seeking counsel from men is wonderful, but there are times all men will answer like the prophet. This is your situation, Ba. Only God knows. I don't have an experience to deal with this level of complication. So you must go back to the secret place. For someone, you've lost your prayer altar. You've lost your word study life all in mundane pursuit for things. You want to become a millionaire. You want to become wealthy. Whoever told you it is within the power of God to make great. Vain is the help of a man. The psalmist said, except the Lord builds the house. Is that not in your Bible? It says they labor in vain that build it. That except the Lord watches over a city he said the watchman watched but in vain that it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep God is able to lift men spare me five more minutes and we're done tonight but I sense very strongly in my spirit that someone came to church tonight to encounter the God of all possibilities but it will not just happen just by a prophetic declaration that is coming even now but listen to me I just sense that someone has been crying and bleeding somebody watching somebody right here you've been praying and saying apostle I had to drag myself to church I love God I'm a man of God but I am tired tired because it looks like nothing is happening let me bring you a word of hope the bible says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen it says for the things that are seen are temporal i will hold on through the storm and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men i will hold on through the storm yes i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. I remember we're wrapping up. I'm about to pray for someone. When the Lord gave me an instruction to move to Abuja, I struggled with the Lord for years because I said, Lord, 
not sure that I'm ready for this. I understood the economic implication. I understood the sociological implication. But I could not deny that I heard him. And I got there and I said, Lord, where do I start for God's sake? How do you get a place? And how do you now begin to bring people? But I knew that there was a mystery in the Bible that can birth glory when you understand the conditions. And I remember I stayed in prayer, days turned to weeks, weeks turned to months. Master, you are the one who sent me. This city belongs to you. Would you speak? I remember one time the Lord asked me to go and buy to get the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the globe. This was the instruction. No venue, no nothing. I didn't even know what date we were going to start. And in my foolishness, that was how I placed it and I was praying every day. I'm sharing this with you not for pride. I hope you understand. To encourage you and show you that behind everything that works is this same principle. And all of a sudden, as I began to pray, one day something happened. I suddenly looked at the map of Abuja and the city became small. Very small. It was like as if I was looking from the lens of someone and I was just seeing six local governments and it was a city that was small. Very small. You know the spirit of faith that came upon Caleb? Let us go up at once. That was what happened to me. And I said there is nothing that God cannot do and the rest I leave it to God it is history to God be the glory for those of you who follows who are preparing now for our UK conference and that is a miracle I was discussing briefly with pastor the auditoriums and all these places you see that that is used the the bill for those auditoriums can build estates in Nigeria without exaggeration you see and God gave instructions, staying with him, Lord, what is the secret? This is your mandate. Within about 24 hours of opening doors for volunteers, we, have about, uh, we had about 2,700 workers stationed, waiting. Workers, not people attending. When we open the doors for registration, it's almost, it's the, the registration is almost over now. And this is a meeting in May. Listen, I don't say this to boast. I'm only telling you that behind the supposed supernatural manifestation of men is the childlike ability to stay until the master comes with a word. Hallelujah. You can imagine. I cannot begin to share with you the miracles and the manifold blessings and the hand of God what he's done. Incredible manifestations of his power. I want to pray for someone. There are two prayers that we're going to pray tonight as we wrap up this session. Number one is an encouragement for someone. Listen to me. You have camped around your situation attracting sympathy for too long. Remaining there and hoping people will keep sympathizing while I sympathize with your pain. But it's time for that, the dry bones that you've been hovering around to become an exceeding great army. For sake of time, please can you give us verse 10. Ezekiel 37, 10. He prophesies one more time and breath comes upon the people. He says, and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. Once dry bones, now an exceeding great army. And the revelation behind it is in verse 11 and 12. You may want to quickly look at it. Son of man, these bones represent the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Now prophesy to them that thus saith the Lord God. Behold, O my people. 
he said i will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your grave is that in your bible it says and i will bring you into the land of israel so just lamenting over your financial situation or the barrenness situation respectfully speaking or the ministry situation may not do you much it's time to take responsibility to say lord i am done acknowledging this current situation it's time to partner with the word of god it's time to partner with the ministry of the holy spirit in prayer and begin to stimulate the conversion that bets glory and the secret is found in leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 it says this is what the lord commanded moses that you should do then the glory of the lord shall appear to you there is always what god commands that you should do and when you do it the glory of the lord shall appear please rise upon your feet this is the victory that overcometh the world the bible says even our faith the god of all possibilities as mighty as he is depends on the faith of men to manifest his power some of you you have been limiting the god of heaven through unbelief you have been limiting the God of heaven by not staying with the spirit to obtain strategy that makes for your victory. I repeat to you one last time that vain is the help of man. You can struggle and move from pillar to post only to eat the bread of sorrow. But some of you may need to mark time on the pursuit. I know you've submitted your CVs and jobs are not coming. Minimize running up and down. You have tried. Stay with him. There is value when you stay with him until his word comes. Can we pray? One prayer that I want you to pray from the depth of your heart is grant me the grace to believe in you grant me the grace to believe in you oh god someone open your mouth and pray grant me the grace to believe in you grant me the grace to believe in you i shake away unbelief i shake away unbelief in the name of jesus grant me the grace to believe in you walk upon my faith walk upon my conviction grant me the grace to believe in you that you are able someone pray for one minute grant me the grace to believe for my family to believe for my finances to believe for the work you have put in my hands grant me the grace to believe hallelujah one time the disciples could not cast out a demon spirit from an epileptic patient frustrated they came to Jesus and he said, why could we not cast this out? He said, because of your unbelief. You have not trained your capacity to believe God to rise. Listen, there are different levels of faith taught in the Bible. There is no faith. There is little or small faith. Is that true? There is great faith. There is exceeding great faith. These are various levels. And all of those levels command different dimensions of possibilities. Faith comes according to scripture by hearing the hearing that brings understanding the more you open up yourself now respectfully speaking let us be careful the way we open up ourselves unnecessarily to antichrist information that continue to dampen our faith whether it's the wrong use of social media you can sit down there and absorb all kinds of rubbish at the end of it your faith has deflated like the tire of a car and you now want to use it to command victories in the kingdom it doesn't work that way or you surround yourself with negative people who continue to say all kinds of things you leave the church with a prophetic word from your man of God and by the time you return you are already speaking like you are not saved no I guard my environment very jealously because the decisions that come out of my life affect millions of people around the world I have a responsibility to keep an atmosphere that is faith-filled, spirit-filled, and pro-destiny. I am very intentional about my atmosphere. Is someone learning? 
when Jesus entered to resurrect the little girl, he drove all the people who were laughing to scorn. Get out. There are things and people you need to send out of your life politely but firmly to give your environment the kind of atmosphere for the miraculous. Tomorrow I have a session in the morning. Sadly because of time, I know that many of you have come expecting prayers and impartation. Our time is up. But please, I want to encourage you, do not miss tomorrow. Hopefully, I will just give a charge and I'll have the opportunity to pray. Every time God puts an opportunity like this, a platform like this, among the many things that we receive is not only the revelation of the word and the building of our faith. We give the Holy Spirit room to be able to step in and to heal and to deliver. And then for someone to carry a grace that you have so longed and desired, Instructions are wonderful, but sometimes what we need are impartations that just activate our destinies for the next level. We have to pause for now, but I want you to return home prayerfully and determine that in this conference, I'm going to receive something from heaven. And tomorrow morning that you come early, I don't know what time it is tomorrow, let me encourage you. Someone help me. Nine. If I were you, I will come before that time and be praying in the spirit. Don't come and be gisting and eventually you start telling lies and found out you've even sinned against God before the conference. That when you come to an atmosphere like this, you settle down and start praying. Lord, as the word comes, I, I receive the, the ears that hear, the eyes that see, and I expand my vessels for oil to come. Are we together? I declare over your life, standing upon the grace of the man of God, the Father and the angel over this house, that in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, every situation that has mocked God in your life, brought pain to your life, and made many to say you are Ichabod. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a mighty breakthrough for you now. Let there be a mighty breakthrough for you now. I stand in partnership with the prophetic unction that is upon this house. For some of you, I literally prophesy over you by this time tomorrow. That tomorrow by the time you are returning, you will return with strange manifestations of possibilities. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I curse the spirit of unbelief. Every manifestation of unbelief eating up your conviction, marking your life down so that you are not able to make progress because of fear, because of doubt. In the name of Jesus, let unbelief live your life now. The Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So please do well. Make sure you are here tomorrow. Invite everybody and tell them it's going to be a time of teaching and impartation. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin